Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back. Now before we get into the night shave, I want to remind everybody that this video is brought to you in part by Henders Classics and Company. Uh, speaking of Henders, I'll be using their stuff tonight, as you saw from the thumbnail. But I'm doing a little bit of a twist with the scent you're on. So I got this idea from Aaron Hall, who mentioned taking Bay Rum and mixing that with a little bit of Seafarer. So I don't have the Bay Rum oil, I just have the scented soap. So I took a little bit of soap, put in two drops of Seafarer oil. Now the scent notes according to Hendrix's website for Bay Rum is West Indian Bay Orange Peel and Zest. Uh, the Seafarer is mango, grapefruit zest, and sandalwood. So we'll see how it goes. I have it mixed up, it smells really good so far, but let's see how it goes. I might have gotten the soap a little bit overhydrated in my in my zeal of trying this. So we shall see. The bowl, of course, is the beautiful HC and C stainless steel bowl with the Teton Shaves Zen series. And the brush, or not the brush, this is the brush. The razor is going to be the Kai Captain with a, I believe it's a second use Schick Pro line. Okay, I think this will definitely work better with the scent your own because I'm getting a little more of that bare rum poking through. There's just a hint of the, uh, the seafarer. So if you have these scent oils, I'll try mixing those too. I may add one more drop for my second pass, for the second and third pass. But I didn't want to add too much because this is already scented and usually about four. Three to four seems to be the really good balance for me, depending on the scent oils. Or the fragrance oils, scent oils, whatever you want to do. You didn't want to get frag burn. All right. So here we go with the beautiful Kai. Now, this weekend, I believe in one of my last videos, I mentioned the... Um, the German street markets in around Christmas time. And how much I miss those. Because the scents, the sights, just everything about them. I just, I loved it over there. Well, Utah, every year, Down, this is the place Monument, which is right across the, the street from Hogel Zoo. Uh, they do a German Christmas market, or Christkindlmarkt. And you know, they have general vendors that bring in their crafts and stuff. And we went, they didn't have it last year, I don't think. We went the year before, and you know, we've gone a few times with my parents. And this year, we ended up going again. because the uh, one of our favorite food trucks is gonna be there. It, they make a German, well they call it a German street food, which in reality, it's a Turkish food. Every, every one of these shops I ever ate in when I was in Germany was all run by Turks. So it's a Turkish street food, partner in Germany. And that is a dinner. D-O with the umlauts, N-E-R, dinner. It's uh, like a pita bread, flat bread with lamb and just all kinds of goodness in it. Just, oh, they are so delicious. I had numerous dinners when I was in Germany. Turns out that with a Turkish soda called Ula Dog, which tastes kind of like bubblegum. Had that and I was a happy man. So 
So we went because this this place is going to be there. Now they used to have a couple locations you could go in. One was like a food court in a mall down in Provo, like two hours away. And then they had another one, another location in Provo. But that one closed, and then one of the mall closed, you know, pandemic, so then have a food truck. And when they come up here, we always stop and, and get get one. But it's winter, they don't do them in the winter. Or they don't do it in the winter. So. They ended up going to this German market. And the line to get their stuff was just really long. And rightfully so, because it's really dang good. So I went and got one of those. Walked around. It was just traffic to get there was a nightmare. It took 45 minutes to go a block. Traffic sucked. Right, we're gonna have a little, one, a little bit more sun here. And parking wasn't too bad once we got in, but holy cow, traffic was a nightmare. The place was so busy. It was hard to walk around to see all the vendors just because it was so busy. And the line to get into the food was just ridiculously long. Just, I mean, it wasn't just, it wasn't just this Dooner place. It was all of it. Just really long lines to get pretty much anything. It just wasn't super enjoyable. Uh, but on the plus side, when they have, uh, they had a, one of the shops in town that, that sells, I see in town from Salt Lake, that sells nutcrackers and, and uh, cuckoo clocks and you know traditional Southern German Bavarian things. They had a they had a little location there you can go and look at stuff and buy stuff. And uh, we were we were walking by near the end of our trip because they had you walk in you can either go left, right, straight ahead to view the shops and and things. So we started off we went left, we went right, went down all the way there, came back up, went up or straight from the gate, and then went around and came back from what would have been the left side coming in. And if you remember from my last video, I mentioned a German, a warm German alcoholic beverage that was only available at these markets called Glühwein. There was a vendor there selling non-alcoholic Glühwein. I don't drink, so that was perfect for me. So I saw that and go, ooh, Glühwein. I, I kind of need to get one. And they had you know, traditional German waffles and good things they're selling. And they have another sign that says, Wir sprechen Deutsch. So the person that I heard speaking German, she was filling the, uh, the Glühwein where they had the glue line for this dispensing under the cups and whatnot. She was doing that when I got up to do my order. And uh, there's a kid there that could have been more than late teens. So in the initial, yeah, I'd like a glue line. But I said, the, of course, glue line like I would if I were speaking German. So she fills up the cup and, and hands it to me and and speaks to me in German, and I'm wearing my my Bavarian wool jacket, traditional Bavarian wool jacket. So she she turns around, and you know I'm wearing this very traditional Bavarian jacket. I'm not wearing my wool hat that I have that's Bavarian as well, and I left that at home. But with how I said the word Glühwein and the jacket I was wearing, she assumed correctly that I speak German. So she instantly just started speaking to me in German and says, here you go. I'm like, all right, thank you very much. She was like, oh, here is, you know, $4 or whatever the price was. So I handed her the money and I said, thank you. And she's like, is this four? And I'm like, yeah, it's four, you can go ahead and count it, and whatever, and, you know, just all that is in German, just right in German. So I got my dinner, I got my Glühwein, 
in the scent. Let's just flick our number. It was a little, it was more pleasant than I remember because <laughs> it didn't have like 15 different vendors selling different recipes of it. And wafting with all the other scents of baked goods and whatnot. So I was just drinking that and oh man, it was good stuff. But other than the Dünner and the Glühwein, and they, there's a guy that was performing the Diodels, he, he played the bells, the, um, the accordion, and he sang, and these were in traditional German clothes. Uh, we, we saw him near the beginning. One of the last songs he sang before he was done performing for the, that time was Silent Night. And I've always loved that Christmas song. It's always been one of my absolute favorites. And then I get to Germany and realize, or I found out, it was actually written in German to begin with. That just elevated it even more for me. I just, I love that song in English. I love it even more in German. So he sang it in German, the first verse in German, then in English. So anytime I can hear Silent Night in German, it's always a win. And then I got my dinner, I got some Glühwein. That part was okay. Um, I don't think I'll ever go back to that thing. It was just too crowded and getting there was a nightmare. But those, those things made it not suck quite so bad. So that was this past Saturday. Now today, Monday, is my wife's birthday. For her birthday, she told me she wanted ribs for dinner. She wanted smoked ribs for dinner. So I was like, well, I have ribs in the freezer. I can do that, not a problem. I can either put them on the pellet smoker or I could do charcoal. I like the taste of charcoal with ribs a lot better, so I'll try charcoal. I should use more coal. It was just, it was cold outside. It just, it took a while to get the charcoal smoker up to temperature. I had a hard time maintaining that temperature because of the, how cold it was outside. So, they were on and from about noon until six ish and because of the temperature drop and fluctuation it could have gone a little longer and they're still tender they had good flavor because of the rub that i used one of my favorite rubs but They could have gone longer. Oh well. I was just, my coals were burning out. I couldn't keep it near the end as they wouldn't go above 200 degrees, which at that point just keeping them warm. So I pulled them off. Had dinner. Still had a good flavor. They were still tender-ish. They probably needed a good half an hour, maybe more. But kids were hungry, my wife was hungry, she had one of her really good friends over. They were getting hungry, I was on a work call, they ended up going until six o'clock tonight. So I should get them off. So that we could eat dinner. Once I got them off, they were fine. I mean, I, like I said, they could have been a little bit more tender for my liking. But, still not bad. I've made better ribs. 
and I've had slightly worse ribs. But, you know. All right, now the scent on this is quite pleasant, actually. And I've added, I think I added in two more drops. Now, Seafarer, so a total of four for Seafarer. But no, keep in mind, Seafarer is a little bit lighter of a scent. Bay Rum can be a little bit more. So, and I'm getting a little, a little bit tingling right now because I put in a little bit too much on the Seafarer, I think. Because it's the Bay Rum has a good scent strength to it. And then I put in four drops of the Seafarer. So if you're going to scent your own, or if you're going to add scents to a previously scented soap, like a Bay Rum, err on the side of caution and add in less. But this Bay Rum is a really strong. I think mine is a different batch. I think from what people are saying, it's, this is one that had a little bit too much of the oil in it. So I got this when he was first scenting his own, scenting his soaps. So I think this is one that's a little bit scented stronger than was actually released. So Take that for what it is. I mean, it's still soap itself. I don't get any irritation from or burn. We we'll use it by itself, but when adding in those for the seafarer, I got a little bit of irritation on the neck on that cleanup pass. Not so much during the during the third pass itself. Just during cleanup. Now the scent with those two combined, I think smells really good. It would be one that if, if you like the scent of Bay Rimble, I can mix it up a little bit. And it's some Z-Fair. I think you're going to play something on that one. Good combination. One that I will try again, probably just with three. Maybe after this scent is gone, I'll go down and get some uh, just regular Bay Rum oil. Just a wonderful little cheap cloth here. Oh, I'm all really dang good shave. HCNC, this is Legacy Base Bay Rum with a little bit too much seafarer added in. Just a little bit more fruit to it. That little mango just kind of helps. Bring that pop. The razor again was this absolute beautiful Thai Captain Standard with a second use Schick Persona um, blade. I think it's called Schick Persona. Schick AC blade, whatever it is. Whipped up in the beautiful HCNC stainless steel bowl with the newest brush in the den, this very cool Zen series brush from Matt over at Teton Shaves with. 28 millimeter knot that is proprietary to Teton Shades. Anyway, before I continue rambling on to make this video even longer than it already is, thank you guys for tuning in, and I'll catch y'all next time.